Hello, Marvel United fans. And if you're not a Marvel United fan, hello, strange person who clicked on this video for some reason. I'm Andrew Fantasia. Welcome to Digital Charcuterie, uh, one of your go-to places here on the tube of you if you're a Marvel United person who is excited for the upcoming multiverse uh, to reach your doorstep. We are making that long, long wait a little bit shorter and a little bit sweeter here on Digital Charcuterie with monthly videos and sometimes even more than monthly videos about Marvel United and all the cool little crazy things that we can and can't yet do with it. This is a special video that I did not actually promote to you guys. If you remember the last one that we did where I ranked every new character coming in the Multiverse campaign and the Spider-Geddon campaign, you can watch that in the description below if you haven't already. At the end of that, I talked about how I am building from scratch um, and I, when I say building, I just mean like a Word document that I will eventually share, but building a Marvel United season four the way I would love it in my heart of hearts to be laid out. And that includes how the core box looks, what the uh, stretch goals are, what all the expansions are, new game modes, all of that stuff. And that is coming. That is probably the next thing coming. But for now, to tide you over, because that one is a little bit more labor intensive, I thought I'd surprise you with this video all about the Marvel Cinematic Universe and how compatible it may or may not be. We all know it and like it and love it. And maybe some people hate it because that's the weird narrative now. But the Marvel Cinematic Universe is a big part of film. And it's a big part of Marvel. Before we jump right in, let me remind you, if you haven't done so already, please love and like and comment and subscribe and hit the bell. I think you have to do those in an order that makes more sense than the order I just said it in, but you should know by now how that works. Also, if you are a fan of fantasy or you know somebody who's a fan of fantasy, have I got the fantasy books for you. This is We Were Wizards. Right there, it's a little bit hard to see, but this is book one of We Were Wizards, Secrets of the Stones. Uh, I wrote this. I wrote and self-published this. This is a fantasy novel that I've been working on for almost all my life, and it is finally here. And you can get it on Amazon right now in hardcover and in paperback and in ebook. And if you love it, which I hope you will, uh, you can already get the second book in the series, which is not book two, it's book 11, but it's meant to be that way. I'm sorry for being confusing. That's just the way this story rolls. We Were Wizards, Ghosts of Wizards Past, also available on Amazon in all different kinds of formats. Pick this up for the fantasy fan in your life. Leave a comment or review on Amazon because that helps me out a lot. And check this out. I promise if you're a fan of magic and enchantment and adventure and good old fashioned fantasy, you will have fun with We Were Wizards. So the Marvel Cinematic Universe has been going strong since 2008 when it began with Iron Man. It is now 2023. We've got a lot of MCU stuff out there. We've got tons of movies, tons of Disney Plus shows, and even a couple of holiday specials. As a person who's always looking for fun, unique ways to play Marvel United, one thing I was doing over the past year was trying to recreate certain movies or scenes from movies uh, and seeing how well I could do it. It didn't exactly go as planned. But now that we have all this stuff coming out in the Marvel United Multiverse set, including all these new characters and new game modes, I asked myself the question, with all of this combined now, seasons one through three combined, how much of the MCU can we recreate in this game and can we get as faithful as possible? The answer is sometimes. And in this video, we're going to walk through all of it. We're going to run through every single Marvel Cinematic Universe project in release order and talk about how faithfully you can recreate said projects with Marvel United at your fingertips. One thing you'll notice right off the bat is there are two game modes that are introduced in the multiverse season that were essential for getting this done. Without these two game modes, I wouldn't have even bothered. Those game modes are Commander Solo and the U.S. Agent Villain rules. Because remember, U.S. Agent doesn't have a villain deck. He uses his hero deck as his master plan deck. So I took those two modes as my cornerstone to build this Palace of Insanity and see how faithful we could get to the source material. Every project is broken up into one of three different categories. Either, yes, absolutely, we can recreate it, no problem. No, it's not happening. Marvel United did not give us the necessary tools to recreate this. 
or the one that you'll see most commonly, I think, you can kind of do it if you stretch the rules and really use your imagination. So without further ado, let's take a look at how much of the MCU you can bring to the table next March. Okay, here we go. 2008's Iron Man. Can we do it? The answer is kind of. And get used to seeing that yellow squiggle, everybody. So here's the thing. There's no Iron Monger. Iron Monger does not exist in Marvel United. So we got to get creative here. I went with Iron Man versus Hulkbuster Iron Man. Hulkbuster is standing in because he is a giant Iron Man armor that is bigger than Iron Man, but still uses Stark tech, which is exactly what Iron Monger is. We're going with US agent villain rules because obviously Hulkbuster does not have a villain deck. So we're using those rules. We're also going Commander Solo because Iron Man is solo in this movie. Now Commander Solo dictates you have to have four other hero cards just off to the side as a support deck. So again, we got creative with these. We had to. So the four I chose were Civil War Iron Man, Iron Heart because they are Starkish tech, so it fits thematically. And then War Machine and Nick Fury because they're in the movie. As far as locations go, you should have Asia, North America, Avengers Mansion, and Stark Labs should be the villain's starting location because that's where Iron Monger is built. I don't always add all six locations in these, so you just use the ones that I put in and then the rest of you can feel free to use your imagination. But that's Iron Man. Not the cleanest adaptation, but it's kind of possible. Until we jump to the Incredible Hulk, which is possible in season three, thanks to Abomination. We can have Hulk versus Abomination. There you go. It's doable. Commander Solo again, because there are no other superheroes in this film. And for the four solo support characters, you've got Gladiator Hulk, She-Hulk, Red Hulk, and Doc Samson. I know She-Hulk's not in this, but I just figured let's use those Hulks as just Hulk support because Hulk kind of supports himself. I also went with the secret identity challenge because Banner is constantly trying to keep from being discovered. He's always on the run. For locations, we start off in Brazil, so we got to have South America. There's a lot of stuff happening in the university, so I went there. Then I went with Central Park because we have that big park scene, even though that doesn't take place in Central Park. And Times Square for our villain starting location because there's no Harlem, so I had to get creative. Iron Man 2. Yellow squiggle means not exactly, but kind of. No whiplash. Uh, and you'll see that come up a lot during this video. It's just uh, a thing cannot be done because Marvel United simply did not make the villains that were necessary. The MCU really went for some deep cut villains that I don't think the game had any interest in making. So we don't have whiplash, but we have the next best thing. We have Crimson Dynamo, who is technically Whiplash's father. So it kind of works. So we've got Iron Man, War Machine, and Black Widow versus Crimson Dynamo. You use Europe, Stark Labs, Avengers Mansion, and S.H.I.E.L.D. Headquarters. Start off the villain in Europe because the first time they meet Whiplash, it's in Monaco. Moving on to Thor. Yes, it can be done. Thor versus Loki, simple as a pimple. You gotta go Commander Solo mode again. And backing him up, we have Mighty Thor and Hawkeye, who are both in the movie. Technically, Jane Foster's in the movie. I've got Loki as backup because he's kind of Thor's friend sometimes. And then I just put Valkyrie there as sort of a stand-in for Lady Sif because Lady Sif is not in this game yet. Heroic challenge mode comes into play here. No wilds allowed. I thought this would be really thematic since Thor loses his powers for most of the movie. Uh, we go for a heroic challenge. We make it a lot harder. I went with just all the Asgardian locations uh, with Bifrost Bridge being the villain's starting location because that's where the final fight happens. I don't think there are any locations with deserts. So the New Mexico thing is a little bit tricky, but use your imagination. Captain America, the first Avenger. Captain America versus Red Skull. Yes, it can be done. In fact, the core box lets us do it, thankfully. This is going to be Commander Solo mode again. And for the backups, we'll use Captain America Classic because Cap backs himself up. Captain Carter and Winter Soldier, because they are his friends in the movie. And then I went with Nick Fury Sr. Just because it's the closest thing we could get to the Howling Commandos. For locations, we can use Camp Hammond, the Brooklyn Bridge, the Statue of Liberty, Europe, the Hangar Bay. And then for the villain starting location, any plane location. So anything that flies, like the, the X-Men jet or whatever, because the last fight happens on a plane. And then we get to the Avengers. 
And at this point, you'll see some of the movies and shows in the MCU are a bit too epic to be contained in simply one game of Marvel United. So in those cases, we play multiple games to complete the story. For the Avengers, the first game takes place on the Helicarrier where you have the heroes dealing with a rampaging Hulk. So you can choose from Captain America, Iron Man, Thor, Black Widow, Maria Hill, or Nick Fury versus world breaker hulk and for the locations you can use the locations we see throughout the beginning of avengers asia europe avengers tower shield headquarters but make sure hulk starts on the shield helicarrier just to be thematic for game two to do the climax of the avengers you get the core group which is captain america iron man black widow thor hawkeye and hulk versus loki this time because they're working together you use the Avengers team deck. And since this all takes place in the sea of skyscrapers that is Midtown Manhattan, I just threw in every skyscraper I could. So the New York space, and then you got Baxter Building, Fist Tower, Shield Helicarrier, Osborne Tower, and Avengers Tower, where Loki holds court. So not too shabby, but now we move on to the much more difficult to adapt phase two, starting with Iron Man 3. And for the first time here, ah, that's a big no, we can't do this, guys. I'm sorry, we can't adapt Iron Man 3 because we don't have any Mandarin. We don't have any Aldrich Killian. The game just does not provide enough. The closest thing I could think of is Iron Man 3 sees him fighting a group of people who spontaneously burst into flames. So literally the closest you could get is maybe have Iron Man fighting the Phoenix Five, but that is a stretch. So I just went ahead and said that this one was a write-off. And unfortunately, so is Thor The Dark World, because we don't have Malekith, who is a big-name Thor villain, and I'm shocked we're three seasons in and we still don't have Malekith in this game. So, sorry, Dark World, no can do. Next, we hop over to Captain America The Winter Soldier, and this time, it's slightly doable. The main villain is Alexander Pierce, but we definitely don't have a mini or anything for him in Marvel United, so we gotta get creative. We got Captain America, Black Widow, Falcon, and Nick Fury as your heroes, and the villain you're fighting is Red Skull. So you're using Red Skull's master plan and all of that. You're just replacing Red Skull's mini with the Winter Soldier's mini to represent Hydra using Winter Soldier as its main enforcer. You're also going with the Secret Identity Challenge because Captain America and Black Widow are on the run, right? They're hiding from Hydra. They have to stay incognito. And then for locations, you can use any location that is a boat for the opening fight. Makes sense. And then you've got Shield Helicarrier, where you start Winter Soldier off, as well as Washington, D.C., Camp Hammond, and Shield Headquarters. Now we go to Guardians of the Galaxy, and thankfully this one is super easy, because the Guardians box literally gives you everything you need. Star-Lord, Gamora, Rocket, Drax, and Groot versus Ronin. You can use the Guardians of the Galaxy team deck, plus the Plan B challenge to make it extra thematic, and then just use all the locations that came in the Guardians of the Galaxy remix box, with Xandar being where Ronan starts because that's where they fight him. I love when it's easy. Next is Avengers Age of Ultron, which is, again, an epic film, so we are splitting it up into three different games. Game one is the core Avengers, once again, versus Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver. Use the Avengers team deck, because they're working as a team, and this time you use... Your imagination here, you just go with any boats and any snowy locations. Uh, have Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver start on the boat because they fight them there. And there you go. For fight number two, Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver have done some bad things to the Hulk. And now Hulkbuster Iron Man has to take on World Breaker Hulk. This has to happen in Africa, so just use the Africa space. Those Galactus locations are a godsend for this experiment, I'm telling you right now. And also, Hulkbuster's on his own, so you're going with Commander Solo mode. And for backup, you can use Iron Man, Iron Man Civil War, War Machine, and Nick Fury. Then finally, game three, everyone is coming together, all the Avengers, plus Quicksilver, Scarlet Witch, and Vision. All of these characters are at your disposal now. Have them take on Ultron, use the Avengers team deck, and as long as you use Europe, Asia, and have Ultron start in Sokovia, you're rocking it. We end phase two with Ant-Man, which can only kind of be done if you really stretch things. Once again, Simon has not given us the appropriate villain. There's no yellow jackets 
except there kind of is, but he's a good guy. So we're going to go with Ant-Man versus Yellow Jacket, just standing in for the villain version, which means we need, once again, U.S. agents, villain rules. We also need Commander Solo mode, and we can have Ant-Man backed up here by Wasp, Stature, Goliath, and Nick Fury. I know Goliath is not in the movie, but it's the closest I could come up with, kids. Use the Plan B challenge because Scott Lang and his team of thieves are really good at changing the plan, just like the Guardians are. And then for locations, I went with San Francisco because that's where they live. And then just a bunch of laboratories because that's where we spend 90% of this movie. And now for the biggest chunk, Phase 3. Thankfully, Phase 3 is the easiest because the first season of Marvel United came out around the same time Phase 3 was hot. So they were kind of working in tandem. As you'll see here with Captain America Civil War, it's really easy to do this. This one is going to be split into two games as well. Start off with the airport battle. So you have Team Cap versus Team Iron Man. All the characters from the movie are listed here. You are going to play, obviously, with Registration Clash Mode from the new box, as well as the Civil War Team Decks. You're going to use Europe as your main location, as well as just a bunch of planes, because we fight at an airport. So we've got the X-Jet, the Shield Helicarrier, the Milano, any other planes I forgot to mention. Game 2 is going to be Captain America Classic and Winter Soldier versus... Civil War Iron Man. Once again, you're using U.S. agent villain rules to make Iron Man the bad guy here because uh, he kind of antagonizes the two of them. And for this, you're using any cold locations as well as Europe and the Weapon X lab. Next is Doctor Strange, which is so beautiful and straightforward. I love it. Doctor Strange and Wong versus Dormammu. There you go. As long as you use New York, London, Asia, and Limbo as Dormammu's starting location, you're good. You're reenacting the movie. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 is next, and it breaks my heart to say it. We can't do this one. There is no ego. There's not even any Sovereign, Aisha, none of those characters. So there's no villain to fight. We can't do it. Spider-Man Homecoming. This one's going to be fun. We have Spider-Man versus the Vulture. And I'd like to find a way somehow to sneak Shocker in there as a henchman card. So I think the best bet is to, if he does not have his own henchman card in Season 3, we don't know if he does or not, then the alternate choice is to take a similar henchman, like say maybe Electro's henchman card, and just swap it out with Shocker. And you can use the Shocker Mini to... to identify him on the board. It's Commander Solo mode, because even though he's got a guy in the chair, Spider-Man is on his own. And for support, we're going to give him Iron Man, both the regular and Civil War versions, because Iron Man shows up a lot. We'll give him Miles Morales, because like Miles, Peter is very young and inexperienced in this movie. And then we'll give him Iron Spider, because his suit has a lot of Stark tech in it. Secret identity mode, obviously. And then any New York areas are acceptable as long as you make sure you've got Queens, Midtown High, and have some kind of plane or aircraft for the final fight where Vulture begins. Thor Ragnarok. I feel like the Thor box is pretty much the Thor Ragnarok box. Again, they came out around the same time. Thor, Hulk, Valkyrie, Loki, or Korg versus Hela. Now that we've got a Loki hero, this is much easier to do. You can use the Asgardians team deck. This film is all about the Asgardians uniting, after all. And then for locations, use Sakaar, Battleworld, Limbo, the Asgardian Palace, the Sanctum Sanctorum, and have the final battle be on the Bifrost Bridge. Black Panther is going to be our next film that gets split up into more than one game. You're starting with Black Panther and Okoye versus Claw. We still don't have Nakia, so it's not 100% accurate, but it still works. I don't think we have any locations that are in casinos, so I used Madripoor as Claw's starting location because it feels the closest we can get to that. And then you can also have Asia in there as well as whatever else you want. For game two, you go to the climax of the film, Black Panther, Shuri, and Okoye versus Killmonger. Use the endangered locations mode because Killmonger is all about wrecking places and, you know, leaving nothing but smoke in his wake. And then you can use all of the Wakanda locations and have Killmonger begin in the throne room. Okay, now we get to Avengers Infinity War, which was kind of a big deal. So here we go. To do this right, we're going with the full Infinity Gauntlet challenge, including the added challenge where you add Corvus Glaive, so you're fighting all four members of the Black Order before you fight Thanos. And to make it extra faithful to the source material, I have made sure every fight is as close as possible to the movie, and it works. For the first fight against Ebony Ma, you should have Iron Man, Iron Spider, and Doctor Strange. You can use any New York City locations, as well as Titan, and any locations in space. For the second fight, you're going to use Hulkbuster, Iron Man, and Vision against Black Dwarf. Hulkbuster is standing in for Bruce Banner, who's in the suit, so 
it counts. Then you're going to keep Vision for game three, but this time you're going to pair him up with Captain America and have them take on Corvus Glaive because the two of them tag team Corvus in the film. For game four against Proxima Midnight, you're going to have Scarlet Witch, Okoye, and Black Widow, and you're going to reenact that kick-ass fight that they had on the Wakandan fields. Finally, for the fifth game, you will have Thor, Captain America, and Scarlet Witch versus Thanos. And for games two through five, you're using all of the Wakandan locations, right? Makes total sense. And you have just reenacted all of the major battles in Infinity War. Beautiful. Ant-Man and the Wasp is a big no. We do not have Ghost, unfortunately. We don't even have Sonny Birch. We've got nothing we can work with here. The movie is unadaptable in board game form. I'm sorry. But we can certainly adapt Captain Marvel by having her and Nick Fury go up against Ronan. Now, this was tricky because initially I was like, well, we don't have yon and he's the main villain. But it's not like they fight Ronan at the beginning as like a little, you know, aperitif. No, Ronan is right there in the final battle. So I said, what the hell? Let's use Ronan. We're also using the Goose Pet Companion, which is new to Season 3. Uh, Nick Fury can have Goose as his pet companion. For locations, you've got a Hangar Bay, Cape Citadel, Cree Lar, North America, and Project Pegasus as Ronan's starting location. Avengers Endgame. Now, this is where it gets tricky. Obviously, the final battle, you can have literally any Avenger you want versus Thanos and you can use the Avengers team deck there. But if you want to get extra detailed, and I did because I'm a maniac, I tried to split up the groups that time travel and have each one have a game. So you end up with six games where each game ends with you collecting a stone. So it's kind of the opposite of Infinity War where Thanos is getting the stones. Here you play six games where if you win, you collect a stone. So you are trying to build the gauntlet. And then you play a seventh and final game where it's any Avenger you want versus Thanos. So for each game, you can get creative because there aren't really a lot of villains happening here. I went with Captain America and Iron Man and Ant-Man versus Loki to get the Space Stone. I went with Hawkeye and Black Widow versus Red Skull to get the Soul Stone. You see what I'm doing here? It's not super accurate because, I mean, they don't fight anybody on Asgard, right? Thor and Rocket just go to Asgard and they get the stone there. So have Thor and Rocket fight somebody and if they win, take the red stone. That's the closest we could do. Endgame is adaptable. If you want to get really detailed, that's where you've got to start using your imagination. It gets tricky, but you can do it. And I'm excited to try this. Finally, Spider-Man Far From Home takes us to the end of Phase 3. Spider-Man versus Mysterio. You go Commander Solo. This time, though, you go with, uh, for backup, you go with Spider-Man Noir to uh, stand in for his Night Monkey costume. Iron Spider, because again, he makes a suit out of Stark Tech. And then you get Nick Fury and Maria Hill. Keep the secret identity challenge going. And this time you want to make sure you have at least Europe and London, with London being Mysterio's starting location. All right, we made it to Phase 4, but unfortunately Phase 4 has a lot of Disney Plus shows. And the Disney Plus shows got a little weird when it came to having villains be a thing. So as you can see here, my favorite of the Disney Plus shows, WandaVision, unfortunately cannot be adapted to Marvel United. Even though we have Wanda and Vision and their two kids, there's no Agatha Harkness for them to face off against. There's not even Sword. Sword is not even in the game. So we can't have them face off against a random sword agent. It's just, it's not happening as much as I hate to say it. The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, however, that is happening. Captain America, Sam Wilson and Winter Soldier versus U.S. Agent. You can use New York, Madripoor, and Europe and have U.S. Agent begin on the United Nations building. This one works great. Loki gets a little tricky. There's no He Who Remains because I think that was a character that they kind of made up for the show, but he's supposed to be an amalgamation of several versions of Kang, including Immortus. So even though we know the MCU is giving us a clear cut Immortus, I just went with Loki versus Immortus here. It's Commander Solo mode, so Give Loki support from Kid Loki, Iron Lad, which is a stretch, but I just picked him because he can travel through time. And then for the other two, get any other characters you can travel through time. I honestly don't know who can. Maybe Cable? Yeah, we really gotta play fast and loose here with this one. Also throw in the Alligator Loki pet companion, 
and have the TVA as your primary location and then just sprinkling cosmic locations all throughout. The Black Widow movie, severely criminally underrated movie by the way, you can make it happen. Black Widow, White Widow, and Red Guardian versus Taskmaster. It's all there for you. Use the secret identity challenge because they're staying undercover and they're spies so it kind of felt you know, thematic. And then use any Russian locations or cold locations. Uh, use the raft as your prison. Use Europe. And Starlight Citadel is going to stand in as the Red Room because it's just a giant floating fortress and that can be where Taskmaster begins. Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, excellent movie, cannot be adapted because we don't have Wenwu slash the Mandarin. Doesn't exist. We don't have him at all. We don't, literally the only character we have here is Shang-Chi. We don't even have a sister, we don't have Razor Fist, we don't have Death Dealer, nothing. It can't be done. Sorry about that. And I'm even more sorry, we can't do Eternals, which if Black Widow was criminally underrated, Eternals was Death Row criminally underrated. This movie's beautiful and we can't reenact it in Marvel United because we have been given zero Eternals characters. I mean, we have Black Knight now, that's it. So not gonna happen. Hawkeye, though, Hawkeye can happen. We can do Hawkeye and Kate Bishop versus the Kingpin. We're gonna throw in a curveball, though. Kingpin's got that bullseye threat card. Screw that. We're gonna substitute that with a White Widow threat card. I don't know if she has one or not. If she doesn't, we're just going to use the bullseye threat card and its powers, but we're going to put White Widow on the board there. Uh, that symbolizes her hopping around New York trying to kill Hawkeye and Kate Bishop while all this is going on. And speaking of New York, those are all the locations you're going to have. You're just anything in NYC. Make sure you throw in Central Park. Make sure you throw in Times Square and have Fisk Tower be where Kingpin begins because of course it is. Spider-Man No Way Home. Okay, this is going to be a lot of fun. We're going to go with Spider-Man and and then for Andrew Garfield, we're going to use Spider-Punk because Andrew Garfield's character was kind of a punk Rocky Peter. He skateboarded a lot. He was way too good looking to be Peter Parker. So we're just going to go with Spider-Punk for him. For Toby, we're going to go with Symbiote Spider-Man because of, you know, the infamous Bully Maguire or whatever it's called. And they're going to face off against the Sinister Six Assembled. So you are going to assemble Dr. Octopus, Sandman, Lizard, Electro, and Green Goblin, and then throw in Mysterio as your sixth character because he kind of started this whole mess to begin with, and boom, you've got no way home. Ah, oh, I can't wait to try this. You can use any NYC location as long as you make sure the Statue of Liberty is there because it's kind of important. Moon Knight is next, and it cannot be done at all. All we've got is Moon Knight. The game doesn't give us anything. Arthur Hero is a pretty low-key villain, so nothing we can do here. I'm sorry. Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness can kind of be done. Get out Doctor Strange, America Chavez, and Wong, and have them go up against Scarlet Witch, but we're going to use Enchantress's rules here. We know from the Simon uh, Kickstarter that Enchantress is going to uh, kind of collect other villain henchmen and use them, putting a spell on them. So we're going to kind of use Scarlet Witch in the same way because she can do similar things. Uh, just use her mini from first class where she's red, where she's a villain. And there you go. It works. For locations, make sure you have the Human High Council base and make sure Scarlet Witch begins at Mount Wondagore. Miss Marvel was a heck of a fun show, but it uh, really did not deliver when it came to villains. The villains in that show were the clandestines and a random lady from Damage Control. Yeah, not very memorable, definitely not enough to make Simon want to include them in their games. So we cannot do Miss Marvel because we literally have nobody for her to fight. Hopefully the Marvels will correct that. Thor Love and Thunder, yep, it can be done. You got Thor, you got Mighty Thor, you've got Valkyrie, and you've got Korg. They can face off against Gore the God Butcher. Use the Asgardians team deck once again, and you can use any cosmic locations you want. All right, She-Hulk is a tricky one, and I've got it down as a maybe kind of sort of adaptation here. Because She-Hulk has a lot of villains that kind of pop up in it, and then also its main villain is a random nobody right? The final villain of the final episode of She-Hulk was just a random guy who was like a douche who got Hulk juice in him until 
She-Hulk erased that. So I just went with Titania because she was the one that was in all the promos. She is a She-Hulk mainstay. You know, she's a staple She-Hulk villain. So I went with She-Hulk, Wong, and Daredevil versus Titania. Wong and Daredevil provided ample support in the show, so I threw them in there. And then just use any locations that are on the West Coast. So San Francisco, I guess you can use North America. Anything else that might be uh, in, you know, California or thereabouts. It was tricky, but it can kind of be done. And the same can be said for Werewolf by Night, because we got Werewolf by Night and also Bloodstone and Man-Thing now, and that is very exciting. That makes me so happy. But the closest thing we got to a villain in Werewolf by Night was Elsa Bloodstone's stepmother. And guess what? Simon did not announce Elsa Bloodstone's stepmother as a Kickstarter exclusive. So what I did instead is I'm using Craven the Hunter as a stand-in for that really mean dwarf looking hunter guy who was hunting them down through the maze, you know, who's trying to kill man thing. So Craven the Hunter is standing in for that guy and he's trying to hunt man thing and it kind of works. Black Panther Wakanda forever can be done. Use Shuri Black Panther, use Okoye, use Ironheart. One day if the gods are good and they give us M'Baku and Nakia, you can use those too, and have them face off against Namor. Use the Endangered Locations Challenge again because Namor keeps flooding places and destroying them with his water powers, and then just use all of the locations from Wakanda. The Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special cannot be done at all. It, I mean, I don't think this surprises everybody. Though, if you really want to get creative, Kevin Bacon did play Sebastian Shaw, and we have Sebastian Shaw in this game, so Drax and Mantis versus Sebastian Shaw? I don't know. I'll leave that up to you. You know what? Use at your own discretion. Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Finally an Ant-Man movie that we can actually adapt. Ant-Man, Wasp, and Yellow Jacket and Stature versus Kang. Plain and simple, right? Also, I'm thinking of using the Toad Henchman card because I love how Toad hops around the board. His Henchman card just makes him move around. Uh, I'm talking about the one that came with Mystique. So take the Toad Henchman card but replace Toad with Modok and have Modok hop around the board trying to hurt you. So I'm going to throw that in. And then once again, for locations, we don't have anything quantum-ish. So just use any laboratories like we did with Ant-Man Part 1. It fits enough, I guess. Finally, that leaves us with Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. And thanks to this multiverse season of Marvel United, it can be done because we've already got all the Guardians. And now we have the High Evolutionary so you can do it. Use the Guardians team deck. Use Cosmo the Space Dog as an animal companion this time for some extra flavor. Throw in any cosmic locations. Use the Milano, even though they have a new ship called the Bowie in the movie. And use Nowhere. And Bob's your uncle. You've got Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. And there you have it, Marvel fans. Secret Invasion. It's still too early. We don't know what the deal is going to be with that show yet. Uh, and it's kind of shrouded in mystery anyway, as is appropriate. So I didn't include it on this list. I cut off right after Guardians 3, which seemed like a good safe place to end. Who knows? Maybe in the future, in another year or two, I'll make a sequel to this with whatever else comes out in the intervening months, right? Because we know we got Secret Invasion and we got Loki, we got the Marvels. I am sure we can add to this list together as time goes on. Marvel United fans, you guys rock. Thank you so much for sticking with me this long. I will see you all here next time for season four and what I hope in my heart of hearts it could possibly look like. Until then, may you all be the masters of your own universe.